So we're here today with uh, Aparna and Hisham from Dow Jones and welcome to the Boston Data Festival. Thank you. Thank you. So you guys both just gave a very well received talk, very interesting. I talked to a few people in the hallway there and um, they really liked it. But before we get into that, um, Aparna, can you give me your 30 second bio? Sure. So um, I'm a data scientist at Dow Jones. Um, I've been there for about a year um, working on understanding the Dow Jones or the Wall Street Journal customers specifically. So taking a machine learning approach to understanding who the customers are and trying to figure out how to keep them retained and engaged. And prior to Dow, joining Dow Jones, I was um, a PhD student at Carnegie Mellon, getting okay. a degree in computational biology. Very impressive. And we'll get back to your uh, talk in a little bit. But uh, Sean, can you give us your 30 second bio, please? Sure. I'm also a data scientist at Dow Jones. And I joined about two weeks before Parna did. And one of the main projects I worked on uh, Dow Jones is understanding why subscribers are canceling their subscription. So this is a way for us to understand better what it is that makes a subscriber cancel their subscription. And is there anything we can do on our part to make it better for them, an experience that's better for them, that helps them uh, to retain uh, their subscription. Prior to joining Dow Jones, I got my PhD in applied statistics from the University of Maryland, also from computational biology. Oh, very interesting. And um, so your talk, I caught a piece of that um, around uh, churn modeling, and it's like um, very domain agnostic. It doesn't matter if you're in banking or uh, healthcare, or, you know, signing up students. Everyone wants, everyone wants to know about uh, churn, um, churn modeling. So can you delve into the details of that a little bit? Please? Sure, yeah. And uh, as you mentioned, that's why it was very exciting, because you can take this churn model and apply it to any sort of business. Um, so before uh, we started working on this model about five, six months ago, Okay. And what we wanted, the, the two questions we wanted to answer is, okay, why is it that people are canceling a subscription? And we can, can we identify these people before they actually cancel their subscription? So what we did was we used the logistic regression L1 model after trying different models, because we just thought this was a better fit, it just worked better. Um, and we looked at their uh, online behavior over a six month period. And then we said, are they gonna cancel their subscription in the next three months or not? Um, and we wanted to take into account seasonal effects. So for that, we used a sliding window to make sure we had the whole year's worth of data. So for each subscriber, we had you know, 12 months worth of data and used the sliding right. window approach to have 12 different predictions. Um, and what's great about logistic regression is it spits out probability, which is very easy to explain to someone in the marketing team because this is who this model is specifically for. Right. They're the ones who's going to use it and make it useful for the business. Yeah, I'm sure as a data scientist, that's a big part of your job, trying to figure out um, which model work. And it's interesting that um, you know a tried and true model like logistical regression was the one you kind of right. uh, touched upon. But um, can you briefly tell me some of the other models you tried and what sure. were some of the sure problems because with those? it was um, a time series data. We tried different time series approaches. We actually tried a survival model approach of using a cost okay. proportional hazard model. Um, and we also tried generalized estimating equation because we know there's going to be some dependencies. We just didn't see any addition to what the logistic regression was right. giving us. Whether it's practical or technical, we just didn't see any value um, to what the logistic regression was giving us. Very good. So yeah. that's, what we just no, that's very insightful because half the time it's, it's, it's a good idea to know what not to use the most, what exactly. to use. So part of, um, and I did catch, uh, catch part of your talk also, and you're you were talking specifically about using machine learning techniques in uh, business optimization. Um, yep. Sounds fascinating. Can you elaborate on that for us? Sure. So um, a couple of uh, things I've worked on at Dow Jones. Um, one has been trying to segment the audience, so trying right. to understand who our customers are. And I think that's a good starting point um, to build from there and personalize um, content and even for acquisition and retention strategies. Um, with our existing customer base. Um, so initially my project has been, um, my first project was on segmentation, so trying to understand who the customers are, coming up with discrete groups within our audience, okay. um, and then uh, really focusing on different news preferences of those groups. Okay. Um, so we've been able to show the value of some of that work um, with experiments on the website. Oh, excellent. And um, you know, when you're doing that classification, any specific te techniques? That's uh, yeah. Right to mind. Um, I actually used a similar model to what Hisham used, so it was an okay. L1 logistic regression model. Oh, very good. Yeah. Excellent. And um, machine learning, very very hot um, topic at the moment, or, or field of research, so to speak, and uh, out there in the practical world. Um, can you tell us? Are uh, you guys using open source tools, or what are you using to run machine learning? Yeah, so um, all of our pipelines are currently written in Python, and we okay. use a lot of um, open source packages. So Scikit-Learn is uh, 
that's our primary machine learning package that we use. Um, and there are a number of other remember there's packages we yeah. support to support. Yeah. But most um, and it's also implemented using Luigi, so we use Luigi. Um, oh, very good. And for all the visuals, we do use R. Excellent. All right, I'm not going to pick on that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you're actually both developers as well. No. To an extent. <laughs> no. We're, we're yeah. not yeah, yeah. So we won't get into the do you need to be a developer to be a data scientist? Because obviously you don't need to be a developer to be a data scientist. So um, I've, I met, especially here in uh, Cambridge, uh, Massachusetts, I, I meet a lot of computational biologists who are data scientists and say, well, we're always data scientists because you know, it's a data, data heavy um, field. So uh, can you give, give us a bit of insight into how you made the switch from computational biology to uh, data science, so to speak? Sure, so, um, so my background is in computational biology, like you said, and uh, I think in order to handle biological data and analyze it, you need to have a pretty strong skill set. Right. Um, data can be very complex, uh, very noisy, and it's, um, it can be really hard to pull out trends and really find um, interesting insight in biological data. Um, so bridging that over to the business side has been really interesting. Um, we actually use the same techniques, the same um, a lot of the same expertise, but just applied in a different okay, context. Very good. Yeah. Uh, Sean, your, yourself? Yeah, for me it was, um, I, I had a very good technical background and statistical background, and I wanted to learn more about the business. Right. So I knew I didn't want to stay in academia, so when I started interviewing, I wanted to, I wanted a job where I get to learn the business as I go. And over the last year at Dow Jones, I've learned a lot on the business side. So a lot of the models we're using, we don't just make the model and our role it's done, we actually go and explain this model to the marketing team and see it through how it's being used for different campaigns. And we actually analyze the results of the campaign. So it's like from start to end we're involved, which, which I really enjoy. That's great. Well, it sounds like you guys are both uh, involved in some very, very interesting work. And thank you so much for making the trip up to, from New York Thank to you. Boston Data Festival. Thank you much. Thanks. Thank you.